I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Did you ever fold up a piece of paper and then make cuts out of it to create snowflakes when you were in grade school? Well, that is the inspiration for this Inkscape tutorial. It's actually coming by request from ZPhotoGuy71. Yes, please make a video on snowflake design. I'll watch it for sure, plus one subscribed. Thanks. I think it's a great idea. It actually is gonna be using almost the exact same method of mirroring and then using the path effects rotate. So the original piece that you create, you can then alter and it is reflected simultaneously across everything. It's very easy to do, so let's do it. If you're gonna follow along, this is the A4 template for the page. You can go to File, Document Properties, and on the pop-up menu, Front Page Format A4, we're not gonna use the page today, but at least it'll have us all working at the same size and scale ratio. This method is similar to the ones we did in the Mandala videos, but instead of rendering a precise grid, we can be a little bit more loose. So go up into the ruler area anywhere, and click and drag, bring down a horizontal guide, then go to the side ruler and bring over a vertical guide. All we really need is the cross section. I think we'll do more than one also, so we can just keep adding more verticals down the line there. Take your Bezier pen, and first you wanna make sure you have snapping enabled. If you look up here, there's a magnet with a lightning bolt. Click on that to enable snapping. See how if I hover over the grid, it says handle to guide. That's gonna help you keep everything lined up properly. So click once, draw down your hypotenuse to the horizontal, click again, and bring it to the center grid. If you double click there, it'll complete your triangle. I have my fill set to white with a black stroke. Actually, we don't need the stroke. If you wanna pull up your fill and stroke menu, go to object, fill and stroke. You can click to the stroke tab and X out of it to get rid of that stroke. Or you can hold shift and down here, this little red X on top of the white square, hold shift and click that. That's a shortcut to get rid of the stroke. Your triangle could be any color that you want your snowflake to be. Now, instead of using scissors, we're going to create a cutout shape. We'll go back to the Bezier pen tool and we can make a quick, what is that? A trapezoid, some type of irregular trapezoid. We'll make it some type of green just as a habit because it's a throwaway shape. It wants to snap. So take your snapping off. Now I can hover it wherever I want to put it. And if I push the space bar, it will stamp it. Shrink it down, stamp a couple more, and that's good for now. Because I want to show you what this setup produces, I'm going to collect everything. Control D will duplicate it and we can put it aside just as a visual to see the before and after. All right, let's cut these out and make our snowflake. I'll hold shift as I collect each of the green shapes, go up to path, union, because path effects only work on paths. So now the green is all one path. Hold shift and collect the white triangle, path, difference. This is what you're gonna be working with. Now I go back to path again and choose path effects. You'll see the sidebar opens up and it's blank because you have to push the plus. This will bring up the live path effects selector menu and we wanna first do mirror symmetry. The menu tends to change where things are laid out. So if you can't find it at all, type it up here in the search bar. We'll start with mirror symmetry. The default is mode freely defined mirror line. Don't click anything else. This is what you wanna see, but we're gonna add another path effect. Click the plus again and underneath coincidentally is rotate copies. Choose that one. The default is method normal and six copies. And from doing research, it seems like a lot of snowflake designs are hexagonal. So six is perfect. Go to edit paths by node and you'll see this center node. You can draw down and open it up right about there. And anything you do to the original sliver is reflected across the entire snowflake. Let's start by bringing down one of these nodes so we can have a more fuller snowflake. Try this one. You might wanna bow this out or you can double click on it and create another node and the handles will help you further define your shape. Let's work on the very top. This looks a little thin. I'm gonna make it more of a diamond. The amount of detail you add is completely up to you. I did notice that a lot of times it looks like the ice crystals are kind of forming like fingers. Here's a quick little way you can do that. Grab one node, hold shift and take this one down here. Over here it says insert new nodes into selected segments. If you push it once, you'll see a new node in between the two. And If you keep pushing it, you'll get a lot more nodes. Now from this point, I can push escape to deselect all of them and every other one I'm gonna select. So I've got this one, shift here, here, all the way down. 
every other node is selected and I know I have the bounding box around them. If you don't have the bounding box around them, you may have to select this up here, these arrows in the four corners. If it's not selected, you won't have that type of control. If you do have it selected, I can now with the arrow key, I can move them out or back in. Looks like I missed one of them. You can go back and fix that. Now I think I'll take the valley of each of the fingers and draw it in towards the center of the snowflake arm. I like that. For the center, I think I'll cheat and get the stars and polygons tool. The default star will be five corners and you can draw it open. I want it to be six, so I'll change the corners to six and I'll take the center node in the valley and make it thinner. Change it white, pop that in there. And there's our first snowflake. Let's make the center hollow actually. Do control D, shrink it down. Collect both of them, path difference. There we go, there's our first snowflake. Let's do another one. I'll use this horizontal line right here. We'll bring a new vertical, snapping back on. There's our triangle, we'll make it white. I think I'll use that star again. This time we'll make it green. Let's see what happens if we chop it up like this. Control D, I'll collect both of them, path union. I'll save this. The green path is selected, shift. Now I've got the sliver path difference. Back to path effects, first mirror, path effects rotate, and there's that mess again. All right, let's see what we can do with this type of thing. First, I'll bring down the center, doing like an alligator chop, no snapping, please. And now you can manipulate the nodes any way that you want. I think I'll do the ice fingers here again. So the top one, shift, the bottom one, add some in between, escape. Now I'll grab every other one. Let's drag it out. I like that. What should we put in the center of this one? Maybe a circle? I'm gonna do just the circle. Group it all together so you get the idea. I think this is one of those exercises where once you got the method down, you really can just go in an infinite number of directions. But these two are what we'll do today. Hopefully you found this helpful. Maybe you can make them a little bit nicer than these. Have some fun. Let me know if you end up trying these. Thanks for the suggestion and happy holidays. See you next time.